Ray, welcome it's back exciting. to the podcast. I am very excited to have you back. I'm very excited to chat again. Um, I I can't believe it was. I, I looked it up. It was. Oh, I should have uh, figured out what uh, what number, like episode number, it was that you were on. But it was like 2020 when you were on the podcast last, which it feels like eons ago. Like right. Oh yeah. Pre pre pandemic or the middle of the pandemic. Wow. Yeah. So crazy. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, is it's insane. I was like, oh yeah, that was like maybe maybe a year ago or something you were on the show. And then I looked back, I was like, no, it was like three years ago. Three is, years. Three is crazy. Years. Look, yeah. kudos to you for three years. Like, <laughs> Thanks. like in Thanks. the podcast game. Like I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, um, let's see. When this episode goes live on Spotify and Apple and places. Um, it'll be a week until the four year anniversary. And then I'll be starting my fifth year of podcasting, which so is good. crazy. Amazing. Um, yes. Definitely. Whenever I started this, like recording at a coffee shop, um, <clears throat> which if you go back to those first like five episodes, the audio was so terrible. Like there's one where you can hear a waiter because uh, we were at a uh, like a wine bar type place. Okay. And just like having some wine and whiskey and uh, and a little uh, like cheese plate. And yeah. some waiter walked past and just dropped an entire tray of plates. And you can just hear it shatter in the background of the podcast. The background. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think we, we even talked about it too. We were like, oh, someone just dropped some plates. And yeah, it's yeah. those, those first few, they're, <laughs> they're interesting. Um, the I would not recommend. Learn, all the, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. All the things that you learn. Oh yeah. Constant learning. I, I am a huge believer of just constantly learning, always be learning. You know, yes. you, you and I are both uh, over a decade in the industry now. And yes. Uh, yeah, we are constantly learning. I'm always seeing you posting stuff uh, on social media and like going to conferences and, and all sorts of things. Yes, yes, always learning. I feel like it just, it's part, of, like it drives me, you know, yes. it really keeps me um, on my toes. And, you know, being a photographer, honestly, it's such a, like, in a sense, an easy entry to entry barrier to entry. And uh -huh. so you always have like newer photographers coming in with the, you know, all these different tools and just a younger perspective. And it's like, it just kind of, even for the one, even for us older people and it, it just reminds you, like, we all have so much to learn. Like they, the new ones have a lot to learn. If you've been in it for a decade, you have a lot to learn. If you've been yeah. in for 20 years, there's still a lot to learn because it's like forever changing. There's always new things, there's, oh, yeah. you know. It's just one of those things. So always, yeah. always be learning. Like you said, always, yep. always be learning. It's really easy to like stay stagnant and stay with like, Oh, well, this is how I learned in, you know, 2002, whenever mm -hmm. I got my first camera and it's like, this is how yeah. I'm going to continue to shoot. And, you know, uh, if I, if I never learned how to shoot in full sun, I would still be telling people like, oh no, cloudy days are the best days. Only. It's like a giant Correct. softbox. Cause that's what yeah. I used to tell them. And I'm like, oh man, it's cloudy. Uh, because I love yeah, that full like, sun and I want that dramatic shadows yes. and, and all of that. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. So true. Yeah. So true. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Ray, there's something new that I've been doing on the podcast. Um, it's really just new of the last few weeks, but definitely new in the last three years where okay, um, cool. before we kind of get into your bio, where you're from and all of that, I have some questions um, and you okay. get to pick which question I ask you. Um, I, okay. I stole a lot of these from Stephen Colbert. He has a deal called the Colbert questionnaire that he asks oh, cool. celebrities on the late show tonight show late show. I think no. He's the Tonight Show. I don't know. It's one of those those late night talk shows. And yes, um, I yes. saw a lot of those, okay. added some questions of my own. So I'm just going to ask you a couple questions, and you just pick okay. a couple numbers between 1 and 17. Who? 17. Okay. Okay. I'll go with 17, and then I'll have you uh, do one more. Um, okay. okay. 
on vacations, are you more of a like relax, kick your feet up, just going to sit by the pool or the beach? Or are you someone who schedules all these excursions and got to go see all the things wherever you're traveling to? I'm definitely the relax, kick my feet up, be by the pool at the beach and like let the day kind of unfold. I'm, I'm totally that girl. Totally. Okay. A thousand percent. It's, it's vacation. Like I don't want to really, honestly, I don't want to have to use my brain that much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like for me, like if it's, if it's a trip, like if I'm going to like, uh, like, uh, you know, we've been talking about going on a trip to Europe and like, hopping and because you can easily yeah. travel to a bunch of different countries and like that yeah. that's more of a trip to me where i'm gonna do these excursions and go see these things and you know historical yeah. monuments and whatnot but yeah if i'm vacationing i don't want to do a thing that is the whole point okay. of my vacation is to get away from everything and have no agenda yes. and just like yes. you know we could wake up one day and just be like yeah, let's go on an excursion because it's what I want to do today. Yeah. But yeah, like I don't, yeah. I am right there with you. I will kick my feet up by the pool and just, you know, get lost Have in a, a good ball. book or just uh, yes. get lost in the pool for hours and hours yes. until I'm <laughs> yes. red. <laughs> yes. No, seriously, that's me totally. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I mean, I like to have an idea of some things we could do, but I am not a hardcore itinerary Mm -hmm. day oh gosh I, I don't mind it if I'm like with my girlfriends and stuff but even in that I'm like where's the flexibility off like right we have to have it you know yeah yeah like I'm yeah. cool with doing like one one big thing a day and yeah. we'll have that yeah. and then the rest of the day is just like free for all you do what you want to do yeah that's so. vacation man yeah. oh so, it okay. sounds amazing yeah you got me yeah. dreaming of vacation I know now I need a vacation <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready <laughs> Okay, so now uh, another number. Anyone between 1 and 16? Let's do number 3. Number 3. Okay. Uh, what is the scariest animal? I freaking hate snakes. Oof, yeah. So I don't mean like, I'm sure there's like bigger, scarier animals, you know? Like lions and bears. But uh, honestly, I like, I hate snakes. Like, I freak out and... We're in Texas. It's like hot and humid. And in mm -hmm. my mind, I'm just like waiting on the day. Oh, yeah. I, I am waiting for that day where I'm mid photo shoot and I'm just like walking backwards through tall grass. And I'm always just like, I'm going to step on a snake one of these days and this is not going to be good. And you know, Every there have been time. a couple of times that I've heard like slithering away and I'm just like, let's go this other direction. <laughs> We are I would freak we're, out. We're, we're, we're so done with bad. this. Yeah, y'all. We like, got we got two photos here. We're good. <laughs> literally tall grass. I'm always like, I was like, look, and I like really want to do it, mm -hmm. but then I'm like, how do we do this? Because if if a snake, I'm 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 shoots over. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what's yeah. happening. I just freak out. And you know oh, what? Yeah. My fear of snakes came from my dad. He's I remember as a little girl, he was always like, oh, I hate snakes. So like, I think that's just like, now I hate snakes. Mm -hmm. so anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's my not a scary animal. My, my five-year-old, she loves snakes and she will just like pick up the little garden snakes or find something. Or if like we see a video about a snake, we have a book about like, big animals and like pitting them against each other like would the the crocodile win if it was fighting against a burmese python and then it would give you like it gives you information about the animals which is really cool um it and like cool. educational and then it does yeah. like a, a a fight between the two to see who would win in the book Aww. and that was one that we recently read uh, actually with my son uh and uh, uh spoiler alert the burmese python beat the crocodile and then ate really the whole so yeah see see that's what i'm talking about yep. like they're yeah they're not like big and all of this but like man it killed the crocodile like yeah well those can get up to like 20 30 feet long so they are pretty big uh and that is way too big for me <laughs> i am this is yeah. one of the reasons why i do not live in florida uh for all of y'all my skin is literally crawling 
Yeah. Okay. All right. This is a great time to uh, to maybe pivot <laughs> to another like, conversation. Ah, You're like, John, what have you done to me? me freaked out. 2030p has me freaked out. Like, what? That is. Yeah. It was oh insane. Gosh. Okay. It was so big. Um, that was I remember. A good Thanks, yeah. John. Yeah. No, that was, that, was, that was fun. <laughs> I'm glad, glad we went into reptiles. Um, Here we are. But yeah. Well, um, now that we've learned all about snakes. Ray, give us a little bit about you. Let us learn about you, where you're based, what you do, um, and all those yeah. things. Okay, cool. Yeah, snakes aside. Um, <laughs> so, hey, y'all. Uh, my name is Ray, Ray Whitney. Um, I am here in the Houston, Texas area. I am a wedding and portrait photographer and a business coach to creative entrepreneurs and photographers. Um, and so I have, like John mentioned, I've been in, I've had my business for the last 10 years. Um, I'm in my eighth year full time, which is like so crazy to think about. Um, and yeah, I started my business in the DC area um, off of a whim. I graduated from Howard University. I have a degree in finance and accounting. And I've always loved photography since I was a little kid. And I took this class. Uh, post college to like learn my camera. I mm -hmm. had a DSLR. I didn't know what I was doing, and just learn that photography is numbers. I'm a numbers girl. Finance and accounting, numbers, all of the things. Photography surrounds the fundamentals surround a lot around numbers, and I swear everything just like clicked. My world changed, um, and yeah, here I am, ten years later with a whole business. And I look around, and photography is like my whole life. Um, and I've just really been blessed to be able to like, you know, operate in this purpose, in this calling, in this way. I always think back and I'm like so proud of my younger self for like taking that class, like yeah. investing in it. I mean, I think it was like 150 a month. I was young. I wasn't making, you know, first job out of college. And I decided to like take this class, a six month class. You had to show up and all that. Anyway, changed my life um, and like really just like brought so much purpose to my to my world. Um, so now here I am. Um, I'm in Houston. And um, like I said, I shoot weddings and I get to coach some of the best uh, photographers across the nation on how to build thriving businesses that they love that they feel really good about. Um, and I, I just love it here. I, I love it here so much. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I love that like it was not a planned thing for you to get into photography. No. This was not like a, a childhood dream of becoming a photographer. Mm -hmm. uh, which I also don't think there's a lot of children out there like, you know, <laughs> I want to be an astronaut. Well, I want to be a photographer. Or maybe now, yeah. I don't know. You, you see a lot more, at least I do. Um Yeah. But but it's cool like uh, when you were talking about that like you know, kudos to, to young Ray going out there and taking that six month long class when yeah. you didn't have to, you were out of college, you were in finance and all of that. And like, I, it reminds yeah. me of like that John Mulaney joke of like, you know, thanks for coming out to the show. Cause it's so easy to just not do something and to just like, yes. it's so easy yeah. to just be like, Oh yeah, I'm in finances now. And that's it. I'm just going to focus on that's this. my life. Yeah. 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 No, I remember, I remember like, you know, you graduate from college, you get a job, you do all the things everyone tells you to do. And uh -huh. I remember like one day leaving work and I was just like, is this really like what I have to do for like 40 years? I just, I couldn't yeah. even wrap my mind around it. I'm like, this seems kind of crazy. Like, I don't think I'm meant for this. I don't think, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be good at it. Like I was just having this whole panic moment and it's crazy now to look back and like how, like God has just orchestrated my life. And it's like, I wasn't meant for it in a sense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I always tell people I was not that grave an employee. I just, I was okay, <laughs> but I was not, a, I was not a rock star employee. Like just, that's just my truth. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I definitely had that feeling too of like, once I, I think I was in my job for like two years out of college and I was like, I guess this is just what I'm going to do. I guess this yeah. is my career and yeah. I will do this for the next 40 years and then I will retire and then I'll get to yeah. go live and then I'll get to go do all the yeah. things that I want to do. And, yeah. uh, and I was completely content with that. And I remember being 
what, like 24 at that point and just being yeah. like, yeah, this is fine. This is it. Uh, yeah. This is what yeah. I'm going to do. Um, and, yeah. and I know that some people who are, you know, not entrepreneurs, they're probably also not listening to this podcast because it's an entrepreneur <laughs> podcast, but like probably, there, yeah. there are a lot of people that they thrive under the leadership of someone else and they thrive in yes. the nine to five. And they're like, this is for me. This is what I want. Yeah. And I want to have that structure of knowing that every two weeks I'm getting the same paycheck. And that's cool. And I, I can respect that. I really can respect same. that. And there yeah. are really, honestly, some really cool jobs. Like I have friends that have really awesome jobs, amazing perks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's pros and cons on both sides. I do not believe that everybody is meant to be an entrepreneur. I think entrepreneurship is hard AF. It's crazy. It oh, yeah. definitely doesn't have this, like, you don't have the structure unless you seek the structure of some sort. You know, it's not for everybody, just like corporate America is not for everybody, you know? And I think that as long as, you know, I think that as long as people like learn to love what they do um, and can dig deep and figure out what it is that, you know, like define the love of, you know, and, and really kind of search for that. I was like, as long as you're happy, I'm happy. And yeah. At the time, I was I wasn't happy. I was I was just like you know just doing it. I was just doing what I knew to do. Yeah, it um, was just it was life. It was just it was this just is young. these are the cards I've been dealt, and this is what yes. I'm going to play with. That's fine. Yes, and yeah, yeah. and that's fine. Yeah, for the, and then for the time being, yeah, and then you got a taste of photography and an entrepreneurship, and just like because I remember whenever I had booked my first gig, I was like, this is fun. Okay. I could fun. see myself doing this and like building this into a business and becoming an entrepreneur and business owner and yes. figuring out all that. And then, uh, and then we did and we're here. The short version. <laughs> like the short of yeah. it all. The short of it not, all. We don't have to take you through all the details because there's yeah. a lot of details to go through, but yeah, Those no. Hours but, and yeah. hours. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, so as as entrepreneurs, as the you know the people listening to this this conversation right now, and you know they're building their businesses or maybe even at their nine to five job, dreaming yeah. of the day where they can you know take that camera and create something you know that is sustainable and and uh, you know bringing them freedom in their life. Um, what are i know we're talking about like core values what yeah. what does that even mean as a business owner what are core values yeah so core values we all have core values that we just we live by in general in life like mm -hmm. they're the things that really connect us with our friends our tribe our community um i believe core values are just our beliefs our strong beliefs internal beliefs that um, you know, we use as our North star, um, as is kind of keeping us grounded in and feeling good. Right. And so they're just internal beliefs. Like, um, so for me, I've always said this, um, for years and it's just like, as I continue to define my core values and lean on them, it, it just stands to be true. But like trust is one of the most important core values for me, um, mm -hmm. in my mm -hmm. personal life and in business. Um, you know, as a creative, like trust is so important. When a client does not trust you, we all know how that feels. We all know how that micromanaging goes and how they're over your shoulder. They're telling you what to shoot. They're pointing and doing, you know, all of this, these things. And it feels horrible. Um, and so core values just like are those beliefs that you, you know, you that shape your life um, and help you make connections uh, with the right people and also help you like repel the people that don't have those similar beliefs, um, those similar um, common threads that they just like hold strong to, you know? And um, yeah, so like as business owners, defining those core values is just so like, it's just so important. And this hit me, um, I'm kind of going on a tangent, but the That's core cool. value piece. It's the name of the yeah, show. <laughs> okay. I know. I know. Here we are. I'm, we're good. We're good with business. tangents here. I, I love a good tangent. I love a good tangent. <laughs> no, like I had some experiences with, co uh, uh, you know, uh, coaching, um, 
having a coach and it's all good when it's good, but when it doesn't go well, um, how does that person show up, you know? And Mm -hmm. it, it hit me like, man, like my value of, you know, integrity and care, you know, personal, like personal care is so big to me. Like they just didn't have that. You know what I mean? And it just made me kind of like, it hurt, you know, it hurt to go through experiences like that, especially when you like are investing money, you put big bucks up, you know, you're, you're sharing intimate details of your business, this baby, this thing that you've cultivated um, and the value system doesn't match. Um, And it just hit me. I'm like, yo, like it, it was one of those moments where it's like, man, these are my values. And I like, I have to like stick to them. I have to name them. I have to adhere to them um, so that I can always connect with the right people, whether it's me being of service or me looking for service. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And so that was, and that was about, that was like in the pandemic year, the pandemic year. So yeah. 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 I mean, it like, like you said, it, it defines who we are as business owners because, Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are probably some people listening right now. They're like, okay, that's cool. Trust is one. Um, and like, you know, personal care and, uh, and, and all that, but like, they're still blanking on, like, I don't even know how to define what mine are, which I remember I was there for the longest time of just like, I've yeah. heard about core values. I, I kind of understand that. And I would have interactions with, um, with other people, either uh, coaches or uh, or even just like listening to podcasts or something. I was like, it just feels yeah. off. It just doesn't feel off. for me. I know that it's yeah. like one of the, the top charts right now. And everyone's like, I yep. got to listen to this podcast. And then I listen. And I'm like, yeah, it just uh, the vibe is not right for me. And yep. And, and and it was those those values of yeah that value match yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah 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 and like your clients will find that too whenever they interact with you and and if their values match with yours then it's just like yeah oh, well, this is this is perfect we want to give you money yeah. because this is going to be amazing working together yeah 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 no and I think like. Another one of mine is integrity. And I think maybe this might, mm, this can mm. hone in for some, somebody listening right now, like always operating at a level of integrity and always kind of like doing your best by people. And everybody does not operate like that. Like you hear horror stories of people, you know, um, paying their money for thing and not getting the service or the product delivered or people being very lackadaisical. Like imagine a wedding day, like photographers kind of just like chilling, like letting it kind of be. And they're just there kind of clocking hours by, you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. not really having like that integrity or even um, as small as like on a shoot and um, you know, like being honest with a client about, I don't know, the smallest things, like if they come and they're like, you know, their dress is all wrinkled or something like that. And like, they're like, okay, so everything good. And it's like, you're like, no, you know what I mean? Like, actually, I need to speak up on this. And that might seem small, but for someone who's like a client who has similar, you know, kind of beliefs and things like that, they're like, no, I appreciate that. Like, I appreciate you being honest. Um, I, you know, I appreciate you like actually caring about, you know, me and my, what I look like. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. What I look like. Yeah. Like whatever it is. Um, integrity is another real, really big one adhering to contracts. Um, uh, you know, the, the details of a contract and, um, it respect time, you know, respect is another one for me, like, um, respecting my time, respecting my create my professional opinion, my creative, um, my creative vision, you know what I mean? And like, Mm -hmm. you can feel when respect is not there. Um, And I've had a client, you know, recently, and it just, I just felt like I I kept going the extra mile, kept going the extra mile, and I kept kind of getting disrespected. Um, You know, little slight jabs here and there. And it's like, it just wasn't going to work, you know? Um, And me putting my foot down and, and naming that so that I don't find myself in a hard situation you know, down the road um, with their biggest day of their life. You know what I mean? And, and you know, here I am anxious because 
They barely respect me. They don't trust me. You know, nothing I do is good enough. It, it was a value. It was like, it was not a value match. Um, and so it's like those small scenarios like that. That's like, it doesn't seem big, but they're huge. They're like huge. And they can really uh, point out yellow and red flags for you as a business owner, um, uh-huh. for the people that you service and how you spend your money. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say like there, uh, I was just going to bring up like red flags of, you know, it may not seem that big, like, especially during like a discovery call or something before they even book you and you're just chatting with them over zoom or phone yes. or you meet up for coffee or however you do it. And, and you're like, uh, yeah, I mean, things don't really feel exactly like they mesh and yes. you know, there might be something off, but if you don't have you know, if you don't have those core values set, then it just is that like, I don't know, something feels off, but yeah. they're wanting to book. So I will take their money. And then you find out later on, once you're actually working with them, that they're, they don't trust you and they're micromanaging everything. And they're like, Oh, let me see yes. the back of the camera. Oh no, 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 no. I don't like that. Let's do this. And it's just like, this is not the finished product. Like know that I'm going to yeah. edit all of this too. But yeah. um, cause I have had those micromanagers before and I'm like, yeah, oh, you don't, sure. you don't trust me. And, and it is such a, a, a stark contrast with those who have full trust in your creative. Oh my gosh. Like whenever, you, whenever I ask people like, you know, is there, do you have a location in mind for like engagement photos? I'm like, I've got a ton of ideas, so I am yeah. I'm happy to help with anything. And they're like, we just, you pick the place, you tell us what to wear. You tell us what, you know, we should be doing. If you have some like creative ideas that other people like don't want to do, we're down for whatever you want to do. I'm like, all right, this is going to be fun. so fun. Yeah. This is going to be fun. And it's like, though, you get excited about it. You know, uh-huh. I think like our creative juice and our, our our creative zhuzh just comes alive. And that as a creative is like, man, it's everything. It, it's what keeps us going. Um, yes. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 And one, one of my core values, cause I have very similar with you with like integrity and trust and, and all that. Yeah. Um, one of, one of mine is timeliness and I, if, if you say you're going to be somewhere at some time, then show up at that time or at least yeah. like text me and be like, Hey, yes. so sorry. We are running late today. You know, the, the rain yesterday is messing with my hair yes. and I'm like, totally get that. I will chill. Yeah. And, uh, or I'm on my way and now I have time to stop and get a coffee because I know you're not going to be there on time. Uh, exactly. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, but like yeah. also that with me and timeliness mm-hmm. is a core value that I want. If I say you get your photos within four to six weeks after your wedding, you're getting your photos within four to six weeks or even sooner. And yes. like, I don't want to be pushing, you know, there've been a couple of times where life has just been really difficult. And yeah, uh, you yeah, know, uh, yeah. like last, last year, we, uh, our, uh, daycare provider, we, uh, our two girls were uh, below school age now, or at that point, and they mm-hmm. were in daycare two, three days a week. And mm-hmm. our, it was just like an in-home daycare. And then they, uh, her husband got a job in Colorado, so they moved. And then we were out daycare. So now I had the girls at home all the time. And now my work availability went from, you know, a lot of time to now I have like two hours during maybe yes. half time. And, mm-hmm. and I had to be honest and, you know, remaining, uh, retaining that trust with my clients and tell them like, Hey, we've had some, some changes in life and my availability. I am going to get these photos to you as quickly as possible. Um, but the way it looks right now is probably not going to be six weeks. It might be closer to eight, yeah. but I'm going to still aim for six. I'm going to have some all nighters if I need to, but yeah, you know, I have less availability to edit and they were totally fine because totally I had built that trust with them and yes, they knew that yes. and they were not like, yeah, mm, he's just trying to take advantage of us and he's just lazy and not wanting to get these photos and, you know, just yeah, send us the raws yeah. or whatever. And like, also you clearly communicated. I think like that's probably 
a piece of your core value is like clear, communication, concise communication 100%. on both sides. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, it's little stuff like that where it's, it's on both sides of the fence that you want to clearly communicate with others so that they feel they can trust you and it's a, it's a good working relationship, but that they also communicate with you if things are going astray, if things are running behind. Um, but it just feels, you just feel valued, right? And like, yeah. it just goes back to that, like, that core, like, like that value system, you know? Um, and so I think, again, like people kind of like, oh, it's more core values. It is such a big deal when you have hard, difficult clients or yes. weird client relationships. It's those times when it's like, okay, what happened here? Like, how did I not catch this? What should I have seen? Like hindsight's always twenty twenty. taking that time to think about it. And then, and then that's probably when you're going to be like, okay, let me name kind of some North star values that I just want to follow that I want to adhere to. And I want to pull in those people that have those same, that same value system. So it feels good, you know, Mm -hmm. um, and I can be my best, um, creative, uh, creatively. I can, I can thrive in this space. Um, Cause there's, you know, there's a piece of it that requires a sense of freedom um, for us to be able to really create, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. And yeah. like whenever you're living your core values and you're putting that out there and you don't have to be, you know, saying like, these are my core values, everyone. And, and all that. <laughs> yes. Although I have seen that um, one of, one of my mentors uh, over the years, uh, Devin Robinson with anchor and veil uh, out of uh, North Carolina, he, on his website when he was doing weddings had like banners of these are our seven core values. And I was like, that's really cool. Like I wouldn't have thought Mm -hmm. to put that on my website and I, I don't currently have that on my website, but I may, I try to like incorporate that into the copy on my website and like how I speak to people and all that. But like, even that it was like very to the point, integrity, trust, respect, timeliness, like all of these different core values. And anyone who aligns with that, seeing that is just like this guy. All right. We can work together. I already trust him because I see all these core values. Yeah. 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 So one of my um, kind of like a part of my kind of core brand story is behind Uh being a wedding photographer is my parents, their wedding photographer was a fraud. Now, back in the 80s, you know, it was all film. And so this guy was kind of faking, taking pictures, never had film in the camera. They paid him, he ran off and never delivered any photos, right? So the story is that my, you know, my dad, that my dad tells your mom cried for like three months straight. Like she was devastated because when you think about the people in the room, um, her mom, her dad, his mom, his dad, um, brothers and sisters, siblings, aunts, cousins, People had passed, you know, people, you know, some like a wedding is such a special day, as we know, that a Mm -hmm. lot of times these people will never be in the room together again in this way. Um, And so it's, it's so unique, right? And so photography is so important, um, of course, you know, and anyway, so that's my core brain story. It's like your mom, we never got wedding photos. The photographer was a fraud. Your mom cried for three months and I grew up knowing that story as a little kid. So fast forward, I become this wedding photographer and I'm like, I would never do that to someone. Like I would never be a fraud, right? There we go. That integrity and that trust right there. Like it just, to see my mom, like even I remember as my sister was getting ready for her wedding and we're like pulling pictures. She has like four or five pictures from the wedding day. And she was looking at them and like a couple tears dropped and like, she's still emotional about it. And it's like, man, I would never want to be that photographer that's like a fraud, that's like running off of people's photos, not delivering things, you know what I mean? And so that's a part of my upbringing. It's a part of what built my value system and why I care so deeply about this work that I get to do. Because it's like, man, my parents don't even have those photos. They have like a couple and they're such cherished images because of the people in the room the time, the setting, all of that. And so, mm-hmm. you know, it just kind of is, is a part of who I am as, as now, you know, a wedding photographer, is, it's kind of shaped me. So just goes back to kind of show you like your experiences really shape your values um, and your beliefs and how you operate and show up. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is devastating not having those photos. Cause also I'm sure yeah. there were just like there are today with, you know, everyone holding up their phones and stuff uh, yes. <laughs> at, at our weddings in, <clears throat> in the eighties, you know, I, I'm sure people were bringing their, uh, their cameras to weddings and, yes. and taking a couple yep. of film shots too. Cause you know, I want to get this one and that's how they have those, those few, but I'm sure that a yep. lot of people, they had trust in there's a, a professional photographer professional. here taking photos. Yep. We're going to get yep. to see these once they're developed yep. and all of that. So we're not going to bring yep. our camera. We're going to be present. Exactly. And yep. yeah. And, and then that trust was broken. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. it's, it's something that like, um, I, I've, I've also noticed that once I really defined those core values and really tried to speak to those, like on my website, yeah. I have the experience page of what it's actually like working with me. And I speak mm -hmm. to those core values through that experience of, yes. you know, that I'm, I'm trustworthy. I'm going to show up whenever whenever I tell you that I'm going to be there. And, yeah. and I'm also going to give you good, uh, like my, my opinion, I'm going to share yes. the expertise that I have. You don't always yes. have to take it, but like, I'm going to share it. I'm not going to be like, Oh, well, you know, you could have done this, but you decided yeah. to go with this park instead. And mm -hmm, it's like, well, mm -hmm. just share that and, and let them choose. Um, Make, but, yeah. But once I started doing that, I started attracting a lot more people who aligned with my core values and probably not a conscious thing for them as they're going through, but most yeah. likely like a subconscious, like just, just that feel of, you know, we talked about that, like uneasy, like something is off feel earlier. And, yeah. uh, and then now it's, um, uh, that something is right something mm -hmm. feels aligned and I don't know what it is, but I want to give them my money. <laughs> and yes, yes. And yeah. Yeah. And like, um, so I think that we can learn from both difficult client situations and like uh, really amazing client situations, like yes. kind of, kind of taking time to say, man, they were so like, if I had this client repeatedly over and over, I would be the happiest photographer in the land like kind of naming, what was it, right? Like, what was it that like made that connection feel so authentic, so fun, so, you know, um, trustworthy, you know? Um, and so you can, you can learn from both sides of the coin. You can learn from difficult situations. You can learn from amazing situations. Um, but it's, it's, it's a value system. It's, it's yeah. a value system that, that it, that helped make that alignment happen. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love yeah. it. Um, oh, we've yeah. already, you've shared so many different, uh, values. I, I feel like it's difficult to, to like say for someone else of like, here's some values that you could implement as your core values. Um, yeah. Cause I was going to say like, you know, could you run down a list or something, but yeah, I, I have I, a list. You have a list. Okay. Yeah. It might be, I guess it would be helpful for someone, you know, cause it might, uh, cause I was thinking it would be difficult to just be like, Oh no, your core value is this yeah. for someone listening yeah. to just be like, okay, yeah, I guess mine is respect and integrity too, because that's what Ray said. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Run down the list that way. The listeners, yeah. anyone who's just like, I don't really know. I, d I don't know what my core values are. Um, those sound great, but I don't know if they're my core, um, that yeah. maybe some of these will jump off at them. Yeah, for sure. And like, I can't, I can't name what yours are. I think like mm -hmm. in your, in your heart of hearts, take time to analyze what you believe in, um, what you would stand your ground on, um, a situation that didn't go so well, what was, what happened there? What kind what went off? And then a situation that did go really, really, really well, what felt good there? Um, but okay, let me name some, um, yeah. authenticity, autonomy, creative, mm -hmm. boldness, um, peace, yeah. uh, wisdom, service, poise, respect, trustworthiness, love, justice, fun, faith, um, curiosity, mm -hmm. um, adventure, community. Um, let's see. 
challenge, loyalty, right? Like, so like, again, like I could see some photographers having boldness and creativity and adventure as yeah. part of their, a part of their core values. It's just who they are. They're adventurous people when they're, even not when they're being photographers in their life, they're just like ready for the next thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, or, or they're going to push the envelope. They don't want to be this cookie cutter, like whatever. They want to kind of be more bold. They want to really push the creativity level at every time, at every turn. That might be a part of your core value system, right? So yeah. when you think about a difficult client situation that they wanted this kind of very cookie cutter standard look, and they were like trying to put you in this box and you felt the box and it made you feel like, <laughs> you, you know, all crazy inside. It's uh -huh. because there's there was a value um, like mis mismatch there, right? Um, or people like I know I have some business friends who love autonomy. Like they want to be able to choose. They want to be able to you know like just have their own thought. Like they don't want to have this like group think kind of you know right. feel right. And like so that is a big part of how they lead their team, how they lead with their clients, right? Like how they lead themselves. Um, or even community, right? Like I think for me, community is a, a really big part of my personal life. And I want to say that a lot of times your core values in business just really mirror your core values in your personal life, like oh, faith, yeah. community, you know, trust, integrity. I operate in those in my personal life. I freaking love community. I love my girlfriends. I love my family. Like I'm just that type of girl that loves my people really, really hard. And so in my personal life, so in business, it just trickles on over, right? Like community is so big for me. Um, I, I really hold true the, to the thought of creating safe spaces for people to be themselves and to, you know, to feel seen and to feel heard. And, and then I don't want anyone to feel like, dang, Ray tried to put me in a box. Like she didn't really see me. She just was like placing me there and, and, and didn't really like, like, you know, see me as the, you know, authentic, genuine person, unique person I am, you know? So exactly. I think like, yeah, th those are just some examples of, of some values that, that might help you like trigger some things for some people that are listening. Yeah. Yeah. And like, as you were listening or listing all of those, I was just like, yeah, that one's great. I love that one. Yeah. yeah that one yeah. also really good. All of these are like super positive and I love all of it. And, but there were some of them that really, I was like, eh, oh, that's it. That's, that's one of them. That's my. it. And, and yeah. like you were, you were saying of think about some of the difficult clients uh, that you've had and what yes. was difficult about it. And the mirror of that, the opposite of that is going yes. to be one of your core values, most likely. Uh, most which likely, for sure. Is a hundred percent. Like looking at some of the more difficult uh, client interactions that I've had, it's been either like timeliness of them just like, I had someone show up uh, 40 minutes late to an hour session once and that I did not like that at all. And I yeah. did not push to book their wedding after doing that engagement session. Cause I was like, I don't yeah. want to work with you. And yeah. they didn't want to work with me either because we did not mesh. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Yep. Ray, this has been yep. so good. I have loved oh, all good. of this. This has been great. Oh, and I you. will also have, I'll write out that list uh, for everyone and I'll put it in the show notes too. Um, so awesome. that y'all can go back and reference it and just kind of sit on that for a minute uh, after this and just like, just see what comes out yeah. Uh, yeah. For, for your core values. Um, but before we wrap up, it's part of the show that I like to do where we talk about what we're loving this week and it can be okay. literally anything could be a new movie book, um, could be food, whatever. What are you loving this week? Oh my gosh. What am I loving this week? Uh, that's a really good question. I, I feel like I, I, when you, you told me you were going to ask me this question, so I was supposed to be prepared, but what I'm <laughs> loving in general, let me say this, let me mm. say this. And we, we talked about this before recording. This week, I guess it stands true to, true to because I recorded some podcasts, but I'm loving learning more about being a podcaster. Like I yes. am, I launched my podcast in June of this year. So I'm like super new baby podcaster. And uh -huh. it's just like so much to learn. 
from like the different platforms to use, like from how to like make audio really great, like just like also like, okay, where can I take this thing? Like, um, you know, there's so much to learn. So I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed. I feel like I just YouTube everything. Um, I haven't taken a course on podcasts yet. Like how I work, I'm, I know I'm going to end up taking some type of course or something. It's right, just how right. I work. But yeah, like I'm just <laughs> loving being kind of new at this thing and letting it rip, like putting it nice. out there in the world and like getting better at it. So it's like, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It is fun. It's definitely like, I know for me, it was that done is better than perfect. Cause I would have yes. never launched a podcast if it had to be perfect. And if you go oh. back and listen to like the first 30 episodes or so I'm like, yeah, this is not perfect. I, I, yeah. I was all over the place and so many, um, uh, and you know, bad oh microphone and uh. all that kind of stuff. But, yes. um, but yeah, like you, you grow as you go and I am loving your podcast. The, the Ray Whitney oh. podcast is it the Ray Whitney yes. podcast. Okay. That's I was it. like, I, I was yeah. going to say the Ray Whitney show. And I was like, no, that's like, that's like TV. That's, that's, I know, that's, right? that's down the way. That's your next thing. <laughs> I was about to say, I think you're, I think you're speaking something to an existence. I, I uh, think this might be happening. <laughs> yes, yes. The Ray Whitney podcast is what it is. And it's it's been fun. It's really been fun. Um, I'm not video like this. Like video really takes it to the next level. So kudos to you. Um, if you know, you know. <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, but yeah. um, I, I do love, like I've always loved podcasts. I'm always listening to a podcast. So it's finally so, happened that I put it into the world. Yeah. Nice. So feels good. Yeah. 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 Well, awesome. Yeah. And I'll have a link to your podcast as well. Um, which, sure. um, I am also loving a podcast, uh, this, this week. Um, it's a new one that I, that I found, uh, called search engine. And okay. if, if you ever listen to the reply all podcast with, um, uh, PJ vote and Alex Goldman, um, that one was really good. It was all about the internet and just like random things. And now PJ Ooh. has his own podcast where he just asks questions and he is, a um, uh, like investigative reporter type person. So he okay. was just like, you know, uh, what was one? Oh, um, there, he did an episode about why are we still paying so much for diamonds when we know that they're not as rare as they told us that they were. So then he went in this whole thing <clears throat> about like the history of diamonds and where they came from oh, and, and where mm -hmm. did we get the idea that they were, uh, you know, uh, worth so rare and so worth yeah. uh, three six months salary and yeah uh, and all of that and it was it was a really interesting uh podcast uh and he does i think there's maybe like 15 or so out right now and i have mm -hmm. binged all of them uh but yeah it's just called search engine so uh, okay cool i'm gonna look it good. up yeah i like cool. it cool yeah well, i'm gonna uh, look it up Sweet. Well, Ray, where can people find you? Where can they follow along? And then, of course, we will have the, the Ray Whitney podcast in the show notes uh, also. Yes. Oh, my gosh. If you listen to this podcast and, like, you really got uh, some takeaways for your core values, which I hope you did, come and find me on Instagram. Let me know that you came um, from the WIT podcast. I would love to know that. Um, Ray Whitney is spelled R H. E A Ray Whitney um, is my Instagram handle. RayWhitney.com is the website. It's down right now. We're we're gonna be refreshing a website, but I mean, you can still send me a message. But come to Instagram. That's where I hang out for the majority of the time. Um, and yeah, that's where you can find me. Um, and I look forward to connecting. I love. I really love when people literally DM me. I'm like, oh my gosh. I listen to the Wisdoms and Tangent podcast and like, I love that. I love that. Like, yeah. let's have a conversation. So yeah, come to Instagram. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and listeners, Ray is amazing. I know. I think we connected on Instagram yes. way back in the day and then got yep. to work together and you know, you've been on the podcast before. So yeah, it is just um, definitely uh, connect. So we'll have links to all that in the show notes as well. Uh, but yeah, Ray, Thank this has so been much. so good. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me, John. Thank you so much. This has been fun. Awesome. A good, I love a good tangent. I just want to say that I'm a tangent girl. So I just love how this yeah. felt. It's just like good combo. I like it. Yeah. 
I like it. It's it's how most of my conversations go with just like sitting with a person, just with a friend. Yeah. Where it's not going to be a five bullet point podcast. Um, I may yeah. have those five bullet points. Like even whenever I do my solo shows, I have an outline and yeah. I still run off on tangents because that's <laughs> That's how my mind works and that's how conversations yeah. go. So yeah, I love it. That's it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A thousand percent. Yeah. Yes, well, I so loved our conversation. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Me too. Me too.